Hey! Have you often been described as mountainous, hulking, king-sized, corn-fed? Is it incredibly lucky you grew to be as tall as the basket because you can't shoot for shit? Well, congratulations! You might be a rune knight. But what is a rune knight? Well, prepare to wear a helmet when walking through door frames, make every can of coke look like it was meant for children, and be sure to fight sportsmanlike, even if your opponent is tiny. I like big boys, big boys, big boys, big boys, big boys, big boys. Giants. <laughs> Here we go again, baby. You know, as much crazy stuff as this game offers, nothing will be more fun for me than large lads being large chads. Hell, some of my favorite characters of all time seem to be giant, stoic slabs of meat swinging impossibly large chunks of iron. And I can't be alone, because it seems like everybody in the world of D&D wants a piece of that monstrous might. But who would have thought that the secret to mad gains comes from mad brains? Okay, well, maybe you don't have to be that smart, but you do have to at least learn how to spell. You see, someone somewhere thought it would be a good idea to try and figure out the language of the giants and discovered the ancient art of rune carving. And while wizards and other arcane spell weavers like to pretend that they've discovered everything there is to know about controlling magics, the giants kinda had this down to his science long before Elminster here had stopped shitting his baby robes. But first... Were you that annoying kid that knew everything there was to know about dinosaurs? Were your favorite movies growing up The Land Before Time, Jurassic Park, and even this abomination? Well, if you, like me, were a Jurassic junkie, a Mesozoic maniac, a Triassic tryhard, or hell, even a Cretaceous Cretan, then you need to pick up Dr. DeRoland's Dictionary of Dinosaurs. Take a huge step back in time to where gigantic reptiles ruled the Earth and play as your favorite D&D heroes, but with a new cast of monsters to take on. This massive 300-page 5e supplement includes 57 creatures, mostly dinos, six new playable races, also dinos, and three new subclasses which are dino-themed. As well as backgrounds, feats, 30 new items, guys, they even made mechanics for riding dinosaurs into battle. Not to mention, my favorite part of this book is the fact that it was written by actual scientists to bring you an authentic authentic dino-themed experience. No more boring, one-dimensional stat blocks, no, these guys even tell you how each creature behaves in and out of combat. Seriously, do yourself a favor and pick up Dr. DeRoland's Dictionary of Dinos today. And if you order at my link below using the code YEMBA10, that's Y-M-B-A-10 at checkout, you'll get 10% off just because. A dino-sized thank you to Paleo Games for sponsoring this show, and now, back to the video. So, how does an axe swinging schmuck like us start learning the secrets to giant magic? Well, first off, you gotta start out as a fighter. Fighters are great in 5e because they're just so darn simple. And while some may find that boring, I actually think it gives your character the opportunity to shine through sheer customization. Starting with a fighting style. Fighters get the largest list of fighting styles to choose from, but if we're gonna start taking cues from giant kind, we wanna be right up in the mix. Defense, dueling, and great weapon fighting are all great for a straightforward playstyle, or you can pick up protection, interception, or superior technique to be a little more versatile. Or grab unarmed fighting to just toss dudes around like babies and deliver the elbow drop from hell. You can also get second wind to take a quick breather as a bonus action and heal 1d10 plus your fighter level and hit points once per short rest, but it's second level and everybody and their mother wants that coveted action surge. Action surge is the best fighter ability bar none, letting you repeat your entire action on your turn. And while those sissy mage classes may use this to cast extra spells or whatever, you know the real purpose of this ability is to lay double the smack down on anyone stupid enough to get into action range. But it's third level where all that learning about giants has finally started to kick in, giving us proficiencies in both the giant language and smith tools so you can graffiti giant swear words all over random unsuspecting walls. We also become a rune carver for a bit of that magic giants specialize in. And while most magic users require special arcane focuses or silly dances or complicated components, your particular brand of magic is much more straightforward. It essentially works like this. We take our favorite hammer, helmet, shield, or toe ring and imbue it with a certain rune. And once done, that rune's magic becomes a available to us as long as we're holding or wearing the object. Your rune selection is also very important as each option is not only connected to a certain race of giants, but also does vastly different things. You get four options at this level, starting with the Cloud Rune. Drawing from its connection to Cloud Giants, this gives you passive buffs for advantage on sleight of hand and deception checks, but can also pull some incredibly sneaky shenanigans to force an attack landed by an enemy to hit someone else instead. As a reaction, you can redirect any attack that lands on you or an ally within 30 feet and send it to a creature that isn't the attacker also within 30 feet, meaning you can choose to take the hit for an ally in trouble or send that attack to the bad guy's 
his buddy instead. This move is the crit buster in your arsenal, especially if your party gets surrounded by bad guys as your opponent can essentially feel their massive critical hit connect with your face, only to have their partner explode behind them. You can also pick up the fire rune that lets you double your proficiency bonus for any tool based check or invoke the flames of the fire giants to summon fiery chains and shackles on any creature you land a hit on and then inflict an extra 2d6 fire damage. Any creature under this effect must also succeed a strength saving throw or be restrained and take another 2d6 fire damage at the start of their turn. Restrained is a nasty condition in 5e and being able to invoke that effect that cheaply is incredibly powerful, especially as all subsequent attacks against that creature will be at advantage, which works out really well for the class with the most attacks in the game. Or how about the stone rune for advantage on inside checks and an increased dark vision to 120 feet, as well as the ability to spend a reaction to force a wisdom saving throw against a creature that ends its turn within 30 feet of you, charming the creature on a success. While charmed this way, the creature is incapacitating and their speed is reduced to zero as they essentially fall asleep standing up. And while they can repeat this save at the end of their next turn, something tells me they won't be around long enough to try that anyway. And finally, the Frost Rune for advantage on animal handling and intimidation checks and the ability to boost your strength in constitution checks and saves by plus two. Yeah, just don't pick up the Frost Rune. But the other three come with some solid buffs and some insane abilities, giving your fighter much more to do than most knuckle-headed knights. You can choose two different runes at this level and can invoke each one once per short rest, but this gives you plenty of opportunities to bring the pain with that unique brand of giant flavor. But that's not all. I mean, what would all this talk of giants be without a little giant might? Are we? <laughs> oh, yeah! This ability... <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> had a little. Anyway, now you can call upon the might of the giants as a bonus action and become a large creature, towering over baddies and stomping across the battlefield. You immediately get advantage on strength checks and saves, and you can lay into bad guys with an extra 1d6 of damage once per turn using those gigantic biceps. But there are so many buffs that come innately from just being big. From getting more squares with melee attacks to being able to provide coverage for your tiny friends. And that's just level 3. <laughs> Whew. At 5th level we get extra attack for 2 attacks for round, 4 with an action surge, and much more giant mayhem. And at 7th level our rune knight picks up the runic shield. Giant magic is weird and esoteric, and this allows you to call upon the incredible magical power of nope to spend your reaction to force a creature you can see to reroll their attack if they landed on one of your allies. Which again is an insane crit buster letting you watch out for a nasty incoming attack and then throw up the ancient giant runic middle finger right before it lands. Speaking of runes, you also get to learn another one at this level and two more options become available to you. Now you can pick up the Storm Room for advantage on Arcana checks and the ability to never be surprised, but you can also invoke the rune to glimpse into the future for one minute. During this time you can use your reaction to give any creature within 60 feet advantage or disadvantage on any attack roll ability check or saving throw, so you can help your friends dodge a nasty attack or force the bad guy to eat all the damage on the wizard's fireball. And then there's the Hill Rune, which will give you resistance against poison damage and advantage on saves, and... Uh... <laughs> Lock the cage and enter a rage, baby, because I got you for one minute of playtime! You ever wanted the power of a barbarian without having to eat all those crayons? Well, your Hill Rune can give you resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, and you don't even have to burst a blood vessel. Pick a fight with Grum Grum the Dum Dum and slam your heads together until someone passes out. So yeah, that one's pretty good. <laughs> At 9th level you get Indomitable for a free reroll if you fail a saving throw, which I would usually say needs a buff, but for the rune knight I think we're good on buffs. And Great Stature at 10th level which will increase your giant might damage to a d8 and let you grow 3d4 inches? Really? I mean that's cool, but also kind of weird to see, right? I mean imagine strolling around and seeing a 6 foot dwarf just hanging out. I think you'd be rightly confused. Impressed, but confused. And our rune carver ability allows us to grab a fourth rune to use a day. Sick. At 11th level you get yourself another extra attack for 3 attacks per round or 6 with an action surge. At 13th level we get another use of indomitable, not flashy but can come in handy. And at 15th level we become a master of runes. Now we can invoke all of our runes twice per short rest. And speaking of runes we also max out at 5 options. So we can take every rune on the list, except the bad one, and walk into every fight pimped out in more runic magic than Flavor Flav at a viking raid. But wrapping up we get another use of indomitable at 17th level, always good. Another 
action surge, hell yeah, and at 18th level we become a runic juggernaut. Your giant's might damage immediately increases to 1d10, but you also... <laughs> Damn, boy, he's thick, boy! That's a thick ass boy! Damn! Now your size increases to huge, increasing your reach by five feet and letting you topple enemies with ease. Combining this size advantage with all your other abilities is an insane combo, basically forcing your DM to wonder if it was a mistake bringing out regular old NPCs to a colossal kaiju encounter. And finally, the 20th level fighter capstone is pretty perfect, giving you four attacks per round, eight with an action surge, and 16 attacks in the first two rounds of combat. Spectacular. So, if it wasn't obvious, the Rune Knight is the original big bad. This fighter is just, like, the best one. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's a strong statement, but just look at what you can do with it. It's not often you get a fighter that continuously gets this much better with every level, but here we are. And while fighters usually make great multi-class combos, this guy needs nothing extra. This video is long enough without me diving into feats, but pretty much anything in that list will make your fighter a ridiculous powerhouse. But if you take Great Weapon Master, Polearm Master, and Sentinel, your DM might flip the f table. Not to mention all the crafty stuff you can do with racial features. Playing a Duergar or a Fairy will get you the spell Enlarge, which unlike the Giant Barbarian you can actually hold concentration on. Combine this with your Giant Might ability and you can get huge by level 3 and gargantuan by level 18, making you large enough to suplex dragons. Not to mention all the awesome buffs you can get from your runes for free without having to invoke them. Fighters aren't really known for being skill monkeys, but this gets you most of the way there, so you'll have just as much to do out of combat as in it. The Rune Knight hits that magical line of just enough great stuff without getting overly complex to where it feels like too much, which is the exact right balance to have as a fighter. And while I'll pretty much defend all martial classes from accusations of being boring, I don't think anybody could make that argument here because you've just got it all. So if you're a master at calling upon the magic of block letters, need an extra wide wagon to haul your big ass around, and are getting pretty tired of everyone asking you to grab their lost frisbees off the roof, guess what? You might be a rune knight. Hey all, once again, thanks for watching. If you like what I do and want to support this channel, you can do that over on Patreon. The members of that will be on screen right now, so thanks to all the patrons for helping me make this show a reality. To become a patron, you can hit that link and get your name in these videos for just $1 a month, but higher tiers will include ad-free videos, hangouts on Discord, and games DM'd by me. So check that out when you can. Also, the Discord server is bumping right now with all new people all the time. So if you want to hit me up about this channel, find a game with great folks, or just have fun with D&D nerds, you can find us over there. But until next time, guys, I hope you're doing great, and I'll see you very soon.